We believe God is speaking to us about intimacy. But in that place of intimacy, we find excellence. We find God taking initiative in and through our lives. And may for the next season, we, we hear it uh, 7,215 times again. Okay. To understand how it needs to be God taking the initiative. My brother, my sister, when I say I want in my life God to take the initiative in everything. Yes, we said when is God taking the initiative, thanks. Then excellence will be there. Excellence in your heart will bring excellence in your hands. Let's say excellence in my heart will bring excellence in my hands. But the only way, the only way excellence in my heart can happen if I, is if I first allow God to be who he is. In many translations, yes, we said the word glory. God's awesome beauty. God's awesome beauty. God's beauty that's actually not describable in our human language. Many times even New King James translated with excellence. May God teach us his way, his definition of excellence. Many times, too many times in the past, so many people find the word excellence based on the compliments of others, based on the opinion of others. When God made you, you did an excellent job. Amen. Go and read Psalm 139. We're not going to go into that now, but go and read that, please. We are talking with David's prophetic word that God gave me for this week, Zechariah 2, 3, and 4. We only got out to Zechariah 2, but um, those who couldn't attend the camp, please get the, the teaching. I want to give to you first, uh, just the first verse out of Zechariah 2. We talked about this, and I myself will be a wall of fire around it, declares the Lord, and I will be his glory within it's a wall of fire that God wants to bring around you. And the wall of fire, my brother, my sister, is God's holiness. God's fire destroyed the destructive fire. God's holy fire destroyed every destructive fire in you. Destructive fire of lust, the destructive fire of fear. That fear, anxiety, that negativity, that judgment, that is a destructive fire that can burn in you. Because only the enemy can only copycat. But God is a consuming fire against the flesh. And with that, you are protected by the fire of God. Amen. But excellence and the beauty of the gold that, that God is placing in you is, is only purified through fire. If Jesus, if Jesus said, I will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire... We want to come to know the Holy Spirit. We want to come to know the Holy Spirit. We, we, we must allow him once again to be who he is. Respect him for who he is. It's not our choice to say, I will allow it that you baptize me in the Holy Spirit, Jesus. And we will never say, baptize me in the Holy Spirit, but Jesus don't baptize me in fire. <laughs> we will not say it. We will say, Lord, I give you my life Change my life. I want to go with you. But I don't understand the implication of me following Jesus, me surrendering to Jesus, me saying, God, you must become more. I must become less. Lord, you must be my king and savior. All of that means practically Jesus baptized me in your fire so that all the rubbish will go, so that there will be less of me in the flesh and more of me in the spirit. Because like we said... Well, you can tell me that the only way, the only way, the only way into excellence is I am crucified with Christ. I died with Christ. I was buried. I was raised, seated with Christ in the heavenly places. And from that place, for eternity, Revelation says, you will rule with him as kings and priests. Kings and priests. Kings that you understand today to walk with authority. And priests 
understand intimacy. Intimacy and authority. Somebody tune you, or you thought it was his, your friend. May, may your friend tune you, hopefully in love, truth in love. You need that type of friends. Not just honest and then they judge you. No, that's Pharisee. But in honesty, you can trust him because that walk, man will walk, that woman will walk with integrity by not having a fake. Because the fake, I'm with these people, I'm like that. With that people, I'm like that. On my own, when I'm alone, I'm like that. That's only a proof that I'm not set free by the truth. I'm not baptized in fire. I'm not allowing Holy Spirit to be who he is. If I allow him to be who he is, there will be fire and there will be the freshness of the Holy Spirit like a fountain of life. May God help you. May God help me in all of that. Amen. But when God, as the wall of fire is around me, and I allow that fire to come close, what will be in there is his glory. And the other translation, his excellence. You find his excellence in you when you allow the fire around you. You could write that sentence down. You will have God's excellence in your life if the fiery of God is around your life, that you are protected against the rubbish that's actually coming from hell, the rubbish that is not from God. Are you with me? And if we talk about too close for comfort, like they say, there's excellence in your spirit, but in your flesh, you must be protected against your own flesh. Because it can be your worst enemy. Your flesh can get right what the devil cannot get. Get right. Because in your flesh, you give him the authority. But my flesh must come to a place where David said, My flesh is crying out to the living God. Hey Amen. I'm not there yet, but may God help us. That from my spirit, yes, there will be worship in spirit and truth. My soul renewed my will under his guidance, my emotions more and more and more healed because I have the mind of Christ, emotions, the thoughts, the feelings, the purposes of God in my spirit, and I allow that to overrule my feelings, my purposes, my ideas. But why? Why? Because I know he has such more excellent, excellent plan for me. But in all of that... In all of that, when we do everything that we do, it means nothing if it's not we find driven by who he is. That's love. He explains everything for the body of Christ, for how we must function, how the gifts of the Spirit can manifest, how you can walk on the water, how you can pray for a million to get healed, how you can have the prophecies and you give a prophetic word to every president on this earth and it's accurate and but all of that is nothing if you don't do it from the place of who he is. Let me show you a more excellent way. Last verse before 1 Corinthians 13. Amen? A more excellent way. You go and study in the word. God show me the more excellent way. Why can you walk in that way? Because excellence is already in your spirit. Excellence. Excellence that nobody in this world can have. No world system can give you that excellence. They can applaud you for some things that you can do with your skill, with your talents, with your abilities. But you carry excellence. Because you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit wants to reveal Christ in his glory. He wants to reveal the beauty of who God is. Amen. Are you still with me? Hallelujah. That's why at the end of the next verse, Zechariah 2 verse 10, that you must please, please memorize these scriptures. Get it in your heart. Get it in your in your lifestyle, if I can say like that. Shout and be glad, daughter of Zion, for I am coming and I will live among you the joy in you the joy in you is because you have an expectation that all your prayers will be answered no rubbish 
All your prayers will be answered in the context of what God see what is needed. But the request you put in is not that what God necessarily going to give you. You pray for Ferrari and tomorrow there's no Ferrari. God didn't answer my prayer. Um, he answered you. Maybe later you'll get a bicycle. Um, but he answered. God will always answer. God will always hear. He will hear before you ask him. He knows what you're going to ask. If halfway through your prayer, he knows exactly where you're going. He you knows exactly. He's, he will hear your prayer. Why must you say, God, please hear my prayer? That's to speak to yourself that actually you're saying, you make the request known because you are declaring yourself as, I am dependent on you. When God said, we must pray, give us today our daily bread. And today you don't pray, give us today our daily bread, and in the evening there's no bread because you didn't ask. No, God is so much more than our earthly fathers. God says, look at the sparrows, look at the birds. If God will care for them, how much more will he care for you? Now, why must you then ask? In that asking in prayer, you are positioning yourself in dependence before God. I declare myself by the grace of God to be dependent on God as my Father, that my provision comes from Him. That's why I pray, give us today our daily bread. But that is bread that I must sometimes push into, and that is the Word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. And the bread, the Word, is not... If God says... You shall not live by bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus is saying, I show you the opposite. No, I show you the bread that is actually really the bread. Are you with me? So it's not opposites. Bread is not from the devil. God's provision. Oh, some of the bread, okay, not healthy. But God's provision is from him. But he wants you to understand the absolute, absolute bread that you need. That you cannot starve the real you. And that's you as a spirit. Don't starve. Don't, don't, be, don't be nasty to the real you, if I can say like that. If you have the means and you walk every day and you live with somebody, you live with somebody and... You have all the food, you see they are starving, but you're not going to give them anything. What a type of a man is that? Year in, year out, this guy is struggling, he's actually starving. Well, you call it malnutrition, quasi or I don't know, something like that. And, and that's the way you live. And you're okay, you're okay. You have everything, you have all the resources, you have the money, you have... All the food. But you're not going to give it to this guy living with you in the same house. What type of a man is that? Now that is you if you never feed your spirit with a word. And you allow, if I can say, your soul to starve because you don't feed him from the place of the fullness of the riches of God that is in your spirit. The real you, the fullness of God dwell in your spirit. The fullness of excellence dwells in your spirit. But somewhere you must allow that what is in your spirit to come to your soul. And that you call it God's initiative. Flesh will have 3,000 3, initiatives to you. Fear will have an initiative. That thing will have an initiative that you will just open your mouth when that demon, when that flesh, when that irritation, when that frustration. It's a half a second and your mouth responds to the initiative of circumstance, the initiative of irritation, the initiative of frustration. You have taught yourself that way. Not anymore in Jesus' name. That's now the past. We don't speak it over one another. We must stop doing that. God shoot me a thousand times. The church is this and the church is that. 
way back 20 years ago and still trying to get myself in line. Don't curse the church. That church, they are dead. That church, they are just in religion. Who says so? Who said that to you? Did God say it to you? What about the three people that maybe a hundred people that are really reaching out to God with such a genuine heart? They don't believe certain things the same as us. We don't have the full truth, but we believe and we stand accountable for what God has given us. For the revelation that you received and what we received, you better stand accountable that you will live according to that revelation. If you're part of this family. But we must always be open because it's only the meek that will inherit the earth. And the definition of the meek is not the sissies. It's not the guys that will just go with the flow. The meek is the teachable, adaptable, according to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The one that is teachable. That one that will not stray, that will not argue about everything. The one that will not reason about anything. The one that don't want to first understand everything, actually just to be in control. But is willing to be not in control by not understanding everything, but still go by faith and please God and do what God has called you to do. And by that faith, you overcome the world. According, according to the word of God. That's the people God is looking for. Oh, he loves everyone. But he's seeking you to, to walk with you. When Adam sinned and he went for the bushes, it wasn't like God now suddenly hated him. God still loved him. He knew what they did. He didn't call them because he was confused and didn't know where he was, they were. Hello. God knows everything that you're going through, but he's having the faith that you will respond when he calls you by name. When he calls you, he has created you in such a way that you have the capacity, you have the ability, you have the sensitivity in you to hear his voice and to not just rock up, that's the wrong word, but show up, but get into his presence through the blood. Amen. I've called, nobody had. Let it not be so, like it was said through many prophets. So that's my prayer, my brother, my sister, for this season. That's my prayer that I believe prophetically, that I believe prophetic word over the nations, that the church will come into this place of excellence, understanding the excellence that is in God. What the world's going to do out there, I want to say mark my words, is going to be something excellent like humanity has never, never, ever, ever seen before. The ability, like artificial intelligence, let's not go there, but there will be a, a mastering of intellectualism, a mastering of, of what can happen out there. So it will also be the time like never, ever before because of that. The result of we don't need God. We've built this empire. We've built this Babel that, that reached heaven. I mean, heaven and earth is connected. It's just like we brought heaven down, you know. The Tower of Babel. I get no to say me city. Babel. It's like Babel in Afrikaans. Tower of Babel, okay? That's going to happen, my brother. That's going to happen. And you know the only thing why you will not bow down as a David, Daniel, friends, Joseph, who's, where all the tiniest, is because you have the revelation. You'll not bow before Goliath. And how do you bow before Goliath? By fearing him. Not worshipping him, but by fearing the, the Goliath, all the armies. But David said, I bow before one. That's all. Who are you? Let's deal with you. Because the revelation of the excellence of his God was so amazing in him. Whatever majestic, awesome, 
awesome, clever, skillful Goliath humanity can produce. It has only the authority if you don't know the excellent and excellence and the greatness of your God. And your only protection in time, church, will be if you know the revelation of who's your God. Because if you know who he is, you will know who you are. Because if we said now, crucified with Christ, died with Christ, buried with Christ, raised with Christ, seated with Christ in heavenly places, seated with Christ in heavenly places, so that you have his perspective looking down at your situation, looking down at your success, not bowing before your success, not finding identity in your success, looking down at your success and say, success as a servant is the time over, Lord. Um, when is it time to go to the desert again? Not one of us will pray that prayer. <laughs> But you know, when you pray, Lord, change this. Lord, forgive me for this tantrum. Lord, forgive me for this struggling with this fear. You won't believe it. It's actually you're asking God to take you to the desert. Because that's where he sorted out all the rubbish. <clears throat> In the desert, everything was provided, hey? In Canaan, they had to work for the food. They had to work for the land. In the desert, God did it. Meat fell from heaven and the manna and the quails and the water from the rock and the sandals didn't grow. And uh, they were protected against the sun. They Miracle upon miracle upon miracle upon miracle. When they got into Canaan, God said, I withdraw this, these miracles. Because now you must work the land. But if we can lay back in God's provision, if we just wara wara. You know, one of the symptoms of the lazy guy is he has a lot of opinions. The lazy guy, he has a lot of opinions of things in the future and how things are supposed to work and how one day he's going to do that and one day he's going to do that. Some of you guys, there's not a lot of old people here, but you know, so you find some, some guys, they become old and they become better men. And there are all these things that they wanted to do, but then with 300 excuses why it did not happen. And it was not their fault. It was somebody else's fault. May God, in his grace, show us. And if you have one week left, the best is yet to come. You can make this last week of your life the best of your whole life. Not one here is a Samson. That's not what I'm saying. But the last moments, last minutes of his life. He, the word says he killed more Philistines with that last minute of his life than in his whole, whole, whole existence. Pray that. Some of you older people, pray that. All you older people, not some. I'm nearly 60, so I'm nearly one of those. But uh, what I'm just saying is, get into that place. You say, God, like a Samson, in spite of such a lot of mistakes, because you sit here, I stand here, we know we made some Hamas mistakes, man. But by God's grace, with that what God has for you, in this last hour, for the church in the last hour, in the end times, in the last hour, it's going to be great. That's a good place for an amen. What God's going to have for the church is going to be great. They overcame through the blood of the Lamb, word of their testimony, and that they did, didn't love their lives even unto death. If you must take down the pillars of the symbol of strength and majesticness of the world, and you must pull down that pillars like a, like a oh, Samson, like a Samson in that place. Hello, let it be so. Because of the stature in you, stature in you, stature in you, of a man who was full of arrogance about his abilities, full of arrogance. Uh, because of whatever he wants to do. And if he feel like this, he do this. But here's a man, you know, 
And suddenly in a brokenness, suddenly in a brokenness, in a humility, he reached out to God, Samson. And in that place, he do the impossible. Hallelujah. I speak that over you. I speak that over the church of Christ. You pray that over the church of Christ. And say, God, God, the church in so many places, in so many ways, messed up so much just fighting one another instead of standing, understanding the war is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities that keeps us busy with rubbish. Yesterday we said, Ecclesiastes, God wants to keep you busy. He wants to keep you occupied with gladness of heart. Go and read it. In the book that you expect, that verse, the least, the book that said everything vanity, any, everything meaningless, alles te vergeefs. In that book in the Bible, this verse, God wants to keep you occupied with gladness. Of heart. Find that verse, please, and uh, get it in your head, get it in your heart, get it in your feet to live it out. Amen. We're supposed, this is a revision, we're supposed to do chapter three and four today. Hallelujah. Let's go to three. Okay, Zechariah three. Then I said, This is the man standing with guilt, standing with shame. Standing with sin, standing with rubbish before God. Yes, I must be excited. God is coming to dwell among us. Yes, I must allow the fire of God around me so that his excellence is within me. Yes, I must allow it. But then the man come and stand before God and he stand ashamed with the sin and the rubbish in his life. My brother, my sister, stand before the Lord. Even if your flesh want to scream, with a place of shame or self-condemnation or all of that, but allow the blood that will have the impact. Impact. Take hold of the cross of Christ so that the blood can clean you. Put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him while the angel of the Lord stood by. When the accuser came, he said, look at that, look at that. God said, yes, look at that. No. He said, take it away. Through the blood of Christ, that what is not right in the way that you think, in the way that you, um, how can I say it? Somebody put a throne on your head and it symbolizes something. Many times in the past from the beginning, when, when you were given this throne, when you have this authority over the nations, there's a king and he has this, not halo, what you call it. What do you mean? A throne, a eh? crown, man. He had it toch, Biola. He must have it all seen. Hello. Are you with me? And you have it. But then it resembles something, and that when you open your mouth, when you open your mouth, it will happen. Because of what is on your head. Now, that's not the only reason. But what are we saying? That what is on your head, whatever the enemy and hell wants to put and your flesh wants to put on your head, as you know, this is who you are. You have only authority in the flesh. What you can do is nothing. But God says, no, 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 what I give you, I give you a certain authority to think the way I think. I will clean you so that your thoughts will be my thoughts my thoughts will be your thoughts, not just Isaiah 55, that you all know. My thoughts is not your thoughts, your thoughts, not my, my ways are not your ways, your ways are not my ways. But then what is, does he say afterwards? I will send my rain, what I have in heaven, my thoughts I will rain it down. My ways it will rain down on you. And when my thoughts rain down on you, and my ways rain down on you, Understand that scripture, please. Then after that, he said, and my word that I've sent forth will accomplish what it was sent for. Was it sent for? Yeah, it came down like the rain. It came down. It came down. And it will not return void to God. But it's raining into you, my brother, if I allow, if I allow. His ways 
but his ways never without his reign. Let's say God's ways never without the rain. Without the Holy Spirit, don't touch this book. Too dangerous. Then after that, with the stature that God is giving you, the angel of the Lord gave this charge to Joshua. This is what the Lord Almighty says. If you will walk, walk in obedience to me and keep my requirements, then you will govern my house and have charge in my courts, and I will give you a place among these, place among these standing here. You need to get into the place, not where circumstances push you. You need to get into the place where not, they will not fear keep you bound. You need to get into the place not according to your opinion about yourself, based on your opinion about yourself, based on your financial situation, based about on circumstances, based on whatever. You can give yourself a place. Based on your abilities, you have a certain place. Based on your talents, you have a certain place, a certain standing in life. You better know, is that the place where God has put me? He will give you a place among these standing here. But that can only happen if you walk in obedience. Obedience is a response to the quality of who he is. Obedience a response to, remember we said, his excellence, his glory, his beauty. He takes the initiative. And the one word on his initiative is obedience. Obedience. Those who love me will obey me. You respond in love, in your love relationship with God. But the first thing, if there's love, it will not cheap, be cheap. If there's, there's love for God, God says, it cannot be fake. But if your love is not fake, the word that replaces fake is Obedience. You can write there, fake or obedience. God says, if you love me, it cannot be fake. He doesn't say, if you love me, then you must perform. You know? Tell your wife tomorrow morning, if you love me, you'll give me breakfast in bed. Uh, I don't think you will get the right reaction. <laughs> what am I saying? It's not manipulation. It can, it's not manipulating with with hachi motive, if I can use that nice word. God is just challenging you that if you love me, it must be genuine. It cannot be fake. It cannot be empty words. It cannot be cheap words. It cannot be cheap religious words. So when you sing that song, when you read the word, what are you doing, man? You're getting into the room to say, God, this is all linked together. It, it must, I receive it. I cannot receive a part that is fake. I need to still receive the fullness so if I love you, I will obey. And not just I will obey, I will keep it in my heart. I will keep the way that you think. I will keep your purposes. I will keep your feelings about this situation. I will keep it in my heart and not keep my opinion. Okay. If you walk, everybody say if. If you walk in obedience. Can I go with the last one on that? Food is nearly ready. If, if I am obedient is something. That is, God tell you to do this, and then you do it. If I am not just obedient, but I walk in obedience. You know what, that, what you must write right there? A lifestyle of obedience. To walk in obedience has to do with, I have a lifestyle where it becomes like, I don't want to say a second nature, let's call it the first nature that God has given me. That I get this lifestyle to obey God. You won't believe it. There's a walk in obedience to stress for many guys. It's just naturally that stress comes up and then you respond and then you, or you hide or you get discouraged or you say certain things or, or you overreact or you taking charge so that something happens so that in some way you will not stress about it anymore. You walk in stress or you walk in fear. You get a lifestyle of fear, a lifestyle of inferiority that you're not good enough, a lifestyle of negativity that you will obey negativity. 
You open your mouth, you're negative. Always, how do they say? Get the guys, the glass is half empty, right? It's just the way that you are. It's your personality, rubbish. God is not that, God is not looking in that way at the situation. You cannot just talk yourself out of it in positivity. No, 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 no. But if the glass is half full, you won't believe it, but God's going to walk and he's going to work and he's going to do the miracles with the half fullness of the glass. Never mind half. Let's say there's only a, what's it, ruple, a drupal, a, a drop, just a drop, just a drop of water in the jug. You call that five loaves of bread, two fish, four thousands of people. And only the men were counted, 5,000 men, never mind the wives and the kids. So that's not even half full or half empty. See the way God sees things. Amen. But your response to God's initiative is a lifestyle of obedience. You will walk in obedience to me and keep. I have a lifestyle of obedience and I keep I keep it. I don't just read it and I find an answer. Oh, I found the solution. But in the solution that I found, no, I, I follow the strategy and I see the result. But what I keep is the result in my heart. There's obedience to God to get into Canaan. But what they must keep in Canaan is not Canaan. What they must keep in Canaan is a lifestyle of obedience and the principles of God that they, God showed them there with the Ten Commandments and, and what they've experienced and the power of God that they saw in Egypt. That they must keep in their hearts. Keep my requirements. Not keep, how will I stay out of trouble? <laughs> That's a religion and performance. Rubbish. Keep my requirements because... God's heart is revealed in his requirements. God's heart is revealed in his requirements. See his heart beyond requirements. See his heart beyond the law. The law. I'm not going to do it. There's a law. Drive on the left side of the road. That's rubbish. I'm not under the law. What a stupid way of ending your life. I'm not on the law. So if I feel like driving on the right side of the road, then I'm going to do it. For some reason there was, not anymore, that type of foolishness, religious foolishness among Christians. In the past, not anymore. We speak. We speak revival. Please, guys, we must get into the place. We are a prophetic people. There's a calling on this church, on this ministry. You speak what is going to happen. The church will get into that place. And... Are you saying you, the church will? Are you forcing? No, no, no. You're speaking into the heavenlies. This is what God said, what will happen. You agreeing with God's word. And therefore you say, it will happen because I believe God's word. And you push with the word, the enemy back. And that what his plan is for your city, your city, your family, your nation. Hallelujah. If you do that, if you go, then what? You will govern my house. What does that mean? You will be the boss of everything. No. You will govern my house. I will trust you in you such a way that you will present me. You will govern. I will give you your own house. No. You will govern my house because what I give you, I call my house. If you have a big house, a small house, whatever house, God is calling it his house. If you rent a house, a flat, you have a shack, you have a what? God is calling that shack his house. Better God in that shack than this palace and 700 demons in that place. Are you with me? Where you go, there at your workplace, here, there where you live, there where you relate, there where you dream. It's supposed to be his house. And God says, I trust you with my house. I trust you with my house. You will govern. You will govern it. God says, at the end of the day, the nations will be his house. He has a home, man. Hallelujah. He's going to heaven. Jesus said in, uh, in John 14, I'm going 
and I will prepare a place for you. The word says he's intercessor. What is the place that he's preparing? Can I, can I say that with forsichtigheid, uh, um, caution? What is the place that he's preparing? Now let's see. He's going to heaven, he's preparing a place. But the word says, he's here on earth building his church. Jesus said, I will build my church. Where's the church? Here on earth. He's preparing a place for us, but our place is with, he, with, with the Father. And where's the Father's place? The nations. The nations will be his home. That's his ultimate dream. Not heaven in what heaven is now. Revelation, go and find all that verses, all those verses. His home is the nations, our Father's home. We are called to build with Jesus Christ our Father's home. Not just to build the church, because the church is the called out ones to build with Jesus. That what will be called our Father's home. Build your dad a home. What an awesome, no, there's no higher privilege that you can have on earth. That you can build your dad a home. You don't have the blueprints, but the architect and the builder is the Lord. Like Abram was looking, he wasn't happy with Canaan. Because he saw beyond, beyond, beyond the New Testament. He saw through revelation all the way through that man of faith, that father of faith. He looked beyond everything. He be, looked beyond the coming and the going of Christ through the New Testament church and how the church will become what? A city whose architect and builder is the Lord. You can find it in Hebrews. May you have, have that type of eternal perspective. Oh, please, here and there, try to write it down. I, you will govern my house and have charge of my courts. You will have authority. Charge of my courts. My brother there, my sister, that's, like we said a thousand times, that's like when they were in the boat, they had to take charge over the storm. They had to speak to the storm in the name of Jesus Christ. When they didn't, God in his grace got in the boat and help them, and he did it, and he tuned them, oh, you, oh, little of faith. Why? Because they had to have the faith to address the storm. I will put you in charge of my courts. The entrance points into the nations. You're supposed to be in charge of what is entering this nation. What is entering Bloemfontein? Because he died for the people there. He died for you, nobody else. Nobody else. And we cannot allow the enemy and flesh and people in foolishness to steal God's property. He paid for everyone already. But those who decide I have no respect for the owner of this property. Ah, he died for me and that's what they say. Rubbish. I belong to myself. Going to hell, not because he sinned a lot. Going to hell because he rejected the way, the truth, and the life. But may God help us to put their true message out there. Amen. You are still with me. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Next one. Zechariah 4. We're going for a landing. This is chapter 4. 2, 3, 4. Now everybody knows this. This is the word of the Lord. To Zeri Babel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. We talked about it many, 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 many times. We're not going to do it so much now, but you are driven by his guidance. Nor by power, nor by might. You know, with, with power and with might, you don't have a word to have a word in that power. Now, you must understand that. You don't have a word, need to have a word in that power. With that might, you can have a word before the time, a very foolish word, a, a word of, of frustration, a word of fed upness, a word of, of short temper, a word of, or I must say maybe a long temper. But whatever, you have a word, and with that power, with that strength, you can do a lot. But it has to do with what is the word inside of that power, what is the word inside of that mouth, might, because the scripture said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come over you. So how can the word say it's not by power? 
But it's about the word in the power, the word in the might. It's your might, but it's by my spirit. Because the spirit will never work in you without the word. The spirit of God is faithful to the word. And he will only work, only work, only work in you. Through the word. And the word is the excellence, the excellence of God. When the Holy Spirit works, he will always bring excellence. Let's say when the Spirit works, he will always bring excellence. Because he will bring this, the definition of excellence. He will bring this, what is called the ultimate definition of excellence. So that when the word is in here, anytime, God can take the initiative with a word. With a word. Holy Spirit can take the initiative. Because you know the word. You know the word. Are you with me? Are you still with me? Not by power and what it presents. Not by might and what it presents. But by the spirit that is always faithful to his word. Where I will overcome and be set free by the truth. For excellence. Right. What are you? Mighty mountain before the Bible, you will become level ground. Then he will bring out the capstone shouts of God bless it. God bless it. God will bless it. You stand before intimidation. God says, I will bless you. Huh. Sometimes we just could feel in the past miserable and this and intimidated. I want to do this with these guys. And then they didn't respond correctly. And then I just throw a tent and I leave it. Okay. What you had in your heart is rubbish. It wasn't from God. You made a mistake, you were misled. It wasn't from Jesus Christ. If you believe it was from God, look at the fruit. The tree will show the fruit. So when what you have is from God and everything is shaken, the tree is supposed to come forth. I had this vision to do this and this for God. Be open, have the guts to be flexible, have the guts to repent, because some of the things that you wanted to do for God was not from him. It was a good idea, but born in the flesh, the death is in the pot. But there's other things. It was really from God. But you aborted it. Because the first little bit of a not positive feeling, ask every woman that had a child, knowing there's some un- discomfort sometimes. For most of them, I think. Here and there, some discomfort. Now the discomfort is, oh, I don't have peace from God anymore. Just a bolt. You carry something that God is placed in your spirit. And the moment when there's discomfort, you call it, I don't have peace anymore. We, we're not going to be so immature and be deceived anymore. In Jesus' name. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Oh, the church is going to rise with wisdom. End time church is going to rise with wisdom. And wisdom, wisdom will protect the choices, where to be, what to say, when to say, what to do, and where to do. That is going to be awesome. His wisdom. Because in his wisdom you find humility. From a place of true humility you can honor. There's no honor that you can give God if it's not from a place of humility and wisdom. Because that's called worship. An honor in the context of worship. Satan and all demons, Lucifer will... Honor God, but from a place of fear, because they know who he is. But not from a place of wisdom, not from a place of humility, not from a place of worship. Not at all. And that is the absolute difference. Get into a worship lifestyle that you don't honor God like Satan. Is it not the Bible, James, that says... You fear God, the devil also fear God. But what is the type of quality work you do from a place of love and worship? Okay, are you still with me? So when you talk to this mountain, when you talk to that storm on the sea with a boat, where God, not the devil, where God sent you in the storm, he sent you to the other side, but it will not tell you about the storm in the middle. That sounds, at least you could have warned us. Are you with me? Somebody asks you to go and do something. He knows what you're going to face. And he doesn't tell you. You're going to think that guy, hey man, that's not my friend. He at least could have, could have warned me about the things that I will face when I do that. 
God will sometimes I can what is the word van aspres? Do that. Because he believes that you you will see his greatness. So on the other side, where he's this guy with that no chain can keep them. You know, they do make that movies. They just copycats. You know, all these movies of this great guy and, bah, and the chains go in the dirt. You know. What do you mean the good knee, man? What do you mean honor those stupid movies? What else? Whatever. You know, the guy woke and there's 50 shooting him and everybody, not one, can shoot. They don't know anything about it. And then he just lifts his hand. Ten is dead. Ridiculous. Who can take that now? Mighty mountain. <laughs> Mighty mountain. My brother, my sister, that intimidation that is in front of you, that intimidation, God doesn't see the mountain. God sees shouts, the shouts. God bless it. God bless it. God bless it. Why? It will be a blessing to see how the miracle happened that that mountain will become a level plain. It will be a blessing, the testimony. That giants, they are our food, Caleb and Joshua said about Canaan. That intimidation, those mountains, they are our food. We're going to grow through, through it. And our growth is because of God's going to bless us. God's going to bless us because he's going to help us to deal with that, those giants in Canaan. Um, God's going to bless you with breakthrough. But blessing is not first the goodies. Blessing is the wisdom, the strategies, the, the capacity to keep his requirements, to, to carry his word, to see his heart through the law, to, to, to love his word. That is the biggest blessing that you can have. And it happened in the process of a big mountain that he put and placed in front of you. But he has warned you it will be only through the spirit, not by your power, not by your mind. That is in the place where you see excellence. Next one. Then the word of the Lord came to me. The hands that have laid the foundation of this temple, that hands will also complete it. Why? So that they can see how excellent is the guy. No. Then you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you. Guys. Comrades. Ambassadors of Christ. Agents, what we want to call when you can finish the work that God has given you, the nations will know that God sent the church into that place. When you are faithful, when I'm faithful, the response will neither not be that people will say, he was faithful. The people will say, that man was from God. That man was from God sent into this company. That man was from God sent into this business. In the way that she opened her mouth with wisdom. In the way that she served. In the way that she did beyond what was expected of her. In the way that she walked with integrity. In the way that she dealt with the corruption in the place. Not just condemning people, but giving answers, giving solutions, exposing the rubbish. But bringing the company to in a place to be, can I say, healthy and really functional in an accurate, honest way where we see the blossoming, because of his presence in this company, we are blessed. Why? Because God has sent him in the, with us in this place. I, I'm the one, I still curse the name of Jesus. I'm still busy with a lot of rubbish. That one thing I need to acknowledge. God has sent that man into this company. God has sent that man in this business. That is what will happen. When you and I are faithful, when we as the church are faithful, faithful to take the gospel to every Muslim in Gaza, faithful to take the gospel to every Jew, our forefathers, faithful, faithful to take the gospel into Africa, take the gospel there where when you, when you take the gospel and God will confirm with signs and wonders where he wants to. I hear repentance in our hearts. Amen. Who dares? Who dares? How, where do you get the guts? Where do you get the arrogance to despise the day of small beginnings since the seven eyes of the Lord 
that reigns throughout the earth will rejoice when they see the chosen capstone in the hand of Zerio Babel. How dare you despise the day of small beginnings? How dare you look down at what God has given you a hand this morning? This morning as you sit here. How appreciative are you with what God has given you? Just this so that you have it, so that you will have your breakthrough? No. No, you know, there's no faithfulness, only selfishness. But if you go and make a difference with what you have and let people know how thank you, thankful you are that God has given it to you what you have. And there's an overflow of thankfulness and gratitude that what you have is only because of God's grace. Only because of God's grace. That is a man who does not despise the day of small beginnings. The small beginning by being faithful at Potiphar's house that you run when the wife wants to come for you. For you. Uh, a faithfulness of small beginning. Uh, but he doesn't even know if it's a small beginning or a small end, wherever he's going to end. And that is just to be faithful in jail. Faithful in jail with whatever is there, what other criminal, uh, criminal and knoll is around you that don't deserve anything, anything of God's grace. But in that place... Something small, I will, I will explain the dream. I will bring structure in jail. I will change the environment in jail, not just pray to get out of jail. And that is Joseph. And because of that excellence in him, excellence in his heart, bring excellence in his hand so that things change in jail. Then suddenly when hell is breaking loose in, in the sense of confusion, confusion in the palace, Oh, I know of a man with excellence. He's in jail. And suddenly he's there. How do you despise the day of small beginnings? Not the man Joseph. While the seven eyes of the Lord. We talked about that. Please get that teaching. We're not going to go there again. Very important, very important teaching. He knows exactly what is happening out there. He knows exactly... Every need today, every need of billions, billions, billions of people. He knows the deepest need and cry of every human being in this world. But he's waiting for men and women like you and me that will understand what has God given us in our hand. The chosen capstone in God has chosen, God has chosen that quality, that wisdom, the word of God. What do you have in your hand? What do you have in your hand? May God help you, may God help me, so that we will bring excellence into the nations. Amen. Well, thank you, Lord, for who you are. God, tomorrow... My prayer, our prayer, could be there in Bethlehem, could be in Gaza, could be in Moscow, could be in Kiev, in that place in Ethiopia where, where they want to slaughter Somalia, those Christians. Use our lives, Lord. Forgive us for every form of selfishness, even in prayers, in praying for our own houses and God, yes, you want us to do that, to show our dependency on you. But God, you have called us also into the nations. And tonight, this afternoon, this evening, this week, we could have impact. We can have impact in that 12 nations or that one nation, that one town, by praying as you lead us. Help us to look beyond ourselves. God, as you said through the prophet Haggai, consider your ways. Consider your ways. Get the wood. Build my house. God, and if we must build your house, even through prayer, in such a way as one of the powerful ways to build your house, to build your church in the nations. Arrest us. Arrest us. Arrest us. To be involved, not just to be involved with compassion, but God, practically to be involved in so many wars, in so many challenges, in so many things happening out there. God is on you. 
the responsibility but you believe we will be responsible to walk and to work with you we honor you we thank you for that god that you will come and that you will do that in jesus name so we pray amen